today we have a rematch from the 2011 Stanley Cup playoffs in the first round. Hey guys, Mist here again for another video today, and we have us, the Vancouver Canucks, in the second round against the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, well, I haven't looked at their team yet. Um, they have a pretty decent record, very similar to ours, uh, same amount of wins, so, you know, um, it was a pretty good year for both of us, so it was a very even even team, but uh, obviously, more than likely, I'm sure they have Kane and Taves, well, 100% sure they would have them, and I'm sure they still have Panarin, um, I did not mean to simulate that, I meant to press play game, but uh, yeah, so we are going to see what we can do against this team, so they have 93 offense to our 92 offense, they have 90 defense to our 93 defense, and they have 89 goaltending to our 91 goaltending. So for us, that's Sven Berchi, and for them, that's Patrick Kane, as you would expect, more than likely. But uh, we will look at their team really quickly, and we will see what or how good this team is, which I can only imagine. So 90 overall, Artemi Panarin. Uh, 95 overall, Jonathan Taves, and 96 overall, Patrick Kane. <clears throat> wow, that's a solid first line. That is, it's a first line I'd love to get, but I don't know. It'll be rough, and, but damn, that's a really good, really good uh, first line. So, second line, Marion Hosat, 40 years old, still playing. Uh, Artem Anisimov and Tomas Yurko as the second line. It's still a pretty solid second line. Um, the third line, they have Ryan Hartman, John Hayden, and Vinny Hinestroza. Uh, a pretty decent third line, a two-way, a power forward, and a playmaker. And then fourth line, they have Lada, uh, Schmaltz, and Malone. Two two ways and a grinder, so that's definitely a uh, much more physical line than some of the others. Actually, John Hayden has 90 body checking, so you know it's a bit of a rip. But uh, really scared of that first line. That first line can really give us some problems. Panarin has two point or four points. Uh, Taves has four points, and Kane has five, and f four of those are goals. So. How many games have they played in the playoffs this year? They played seven, so uh, I'm assuming Patrick Kane has the most points. I would assume four, four, five, two, one, one, three, three, one. All right, so was it Yurko? It was Yurko, right? So Yurko and Kane are uh, tied for five points offensively. We will look at their defense, and wow. Duncan Keith has really dropped off. Why he's still playing on that top line, I'd toss Billy Poke up there and uh, have Jarmelson playing here as well with Duncan Keith and then Christian Erhoff and Robin Norrell. I mean, Norrell has some uh, potential, but Christian Erhoff is really, really old. So uh, quite a uh, different uh, defensive core. They are a very old defensive core. Seabrook's 34, uh, Keith is 35, Jarmelson is 31. I mean, that's not that old, but uh, Erhoff is 36. But Norrell and Polka, both at 24, can give them some life. But uh, they probably aren't that fast anymore. Keith still has some pretty decent stats, but uh, 86 overall could be worrying for them. So I think we can definitely beat them defensively. I think that's where we can really make things happen but we'll have to look at the goaltender and I can only assume it's Corey Crawford and it is 89 overall Corey Crawford with Chad Johnson as your backup so very good team uh, I think Hellebuck can do well in this series and I hope he does uh, so looking at their lines their first line is 100% better than ours uh, our second line is probably worse than their second line our third line and fourth line are definitely better than their third and fourth, though, 
which is good. So if they're going to be matched up, hopefully our third and fourth can do really good things. Uh, defensively, we definitely have the better defensive core. Uh, definitely not as good as Seabrook or Jarmelson, but uh, we still have a really good defensive core, and hopefully everything can work out well for us here. And then, like I said, we have Hellebuck, so hopefully he can do wonders for us. He's been pretty good so far, but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this happens. They have home ice advantage. Hopefully that's not too big of a factor. <coughs> but uh, anything can happen. So did the Comets win? They did. They move on to the second round. Awesome. Good for them. Solid. But uh, enough of that. I have spent too long on just looking at the teams. We're going to hop into game one. And we will see who takes advantage in the first period. Sven Berchi, our best player. There we go, boys. Sven Berchi at 15-58 on Corey Crawford. We dominated the first period. 17-6 to are the shots for us. Wow, it's a lot of shots in the first period. So second period, Elias Lindholm. And we just keep going. We got 12 shots that period. And they only got 5? Five? 5, yeah. So, uh... We're doing really good. If we can play this way, then we can be very well off. So we're just going to slow sim the third. Uh, we are still out doubling their shots by quite a bit. And uh, you know what? I'm very glad because we're going to need all the offense we can get in this series. Power play for the Blackhawks. Nothing can come from it. Down to the last five minutes of the third period. Are we going to win this game? 2 nothing. And Reed Boucher with the empty netter at 58 seconds makes it 3 nothing. And game one goes to the Vancouver Canucks. Three stars, Corey Crawford. And third star with a 950 save percentage. Too bad his team couldn't help him offensively. Got shut out by the 19 saves from Connor Hellebuck. And Elias Lindholm had all three points on the night. Really good play from him. Uh, that's awesome. One goal and, you know, two two assists which is good <clears throat> very glad to see us taking game one and the current round of the playoffs are, are over in the ahl we will go be going against the hershey bears in the eastern semifinals, and that should probably be a good series so in the battle of pennsylvania philadelphia takes game number one uh in the battle across the falls uh toronto takes game number one in the battle of california uh, San Jose takes game number one. Not too worried about that, though. You guys can always look at that if you're interested in it. But uh, we'll get going for game number two. And uh, I'm glad we at least get a split um, against them, which is awesome, which is very much needed. But uh, we will just see what can happen. So first period of game number two, 0-0. Zero, zero. All right, shots a lot more even. Chicago's playing better defensively now that they're in or now that they actually have or know what to expect from us uh, because we really came out strong in the last game. But uh, we'll just simulate the second period and see how it goes. So second period, 1-1. One, one. Brandon Sutter at 1847, which is quite early in the period. A uh, good high, high slot shot, though. And then Ryan Hartman on a weird angle. Come on, Hellebuck. I'd kind of like for you to save that one, but it happens. It happens to the best goaltenders in the league. All right, so... 1-1 one, one going into the third period. We could take 2-0 series lead here and completely ruin home ice advantage for the Chicago Blackhawks. But power play Canucks. Nothing can come from it, unfortunately. And Patrick Kane, shortly after the, the penalty kill, makes it a 2-1 game for the Blackhawks. Another power play and nothing can come from it. Down to the last five minutes of the game, another power play, boys. Come on. We gotta do something on our power play. No, nothing. Nothing to show for it on all of those power plays, unfortunately. Like, there were at least three penalties, I know. There was a hooking, a high sticking, and a tripping. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything. Look at where they are. are. They're all on the goal line in their zone. Oh, man. That's kind of, that's kind of shitty. But um, you know what? It's cool. It's it's a very good team. They aren't scoring as much as you think they would be. But 2-1 uh, for the Chicago Blackhawks in game number two. And the series is now tied 1-1. Ryan Hartman with a goal and three hits. 
Second star, Kane. Third star, and Crawford, obviously. First star once again with a 962 save percentage that game. He's doing really good. All right, so just looking at that third period and seeing how we didn't really have any anything go for us in the power play, I want to see who's got really good offensive awareness. So uh, Barrett, she does. Uh, Skinner does. Uh, Lindholm does. Um, other than that, not too great. Who's got? Re is there anybody that has really good passing offensively? Not really. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we just need some better players. How about d defensively? 90 offensive awareness. 90, 83, 86, 83, 83. So, um, this is what they're looking like right now. 88, 86, 88, 90, 90, 88, 85, 86. Um, maybe I want to change things up and put Lindholm there. Uh, yeah, maybe switch those two. Switch those two. Actually, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah. Um... I don't really know though. I don't know if there's much that I can do about it. So I think I might just keep it like that. Um, yeah. Alright, so we're just going to make one or two little line changes and then we will uh, go back and we will go game number three. And uh, now at the home arena for us, every series was tied except for Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Philadelphia now have a 2-0 series lead. All right, boys. Can home ice advantage help us out? Help them out in game number two, but can it help us in game number three at home? First period, he, Vinny Hinnestroza on Connor Hellebuck uh, right about halfway through the period. Shots are very even, but Crawford is doing phenomenal in this series. He's got so many good saves, I can only imagine, and he just keeps getting a lot of shots on him, so hopefully we can finally get through on him, but uh, we'll see how it goes in the second period, and 0-0, zero, zero, we are now out shooting them, um, I don't know, come on boys, don't let Crawford shut you out, I know he's a good goalie, but uh, can anything come? from home ice with all the fans come on power play Canucks can't do anything with it oh man five minutes left four minutes left three two one ah one nothing game it's quite a boring game <laughs> I mean Crawford shut us out 35 saves he's doing phenomenal right now I can't even Hellebuck had a 965, though. He did really good, too. And then Hannah Stroza with the game winner in the first period. So it's a bit of a rip. And we are now down 2-1 in the series. So that's a little worrying. But uh, we will see how we do. So now, game number four. We are ready to play in every series. Or every game. Yeah, every series is now a 2-1 uh, for one team. But, uh, <clears throat> come on, boys, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's win game number four at home so we can tie the series 2-2. First period. There we go. Hot start for us. Sven Berchi at 13-32, and then Tomas Hurdle at 11-30. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Again, when we outshoot him in the first period, we outshoot him. 19-7 were the shots. Very good, very good. So, Second period, oh my god, what just happened? Hayden had two goals, really. And Hurdle got his second to take the lead back after letting a horrendous tie happen. And then Panarin with 37 seconds left, ties the game. Come on, man. Freaking Crawford, man, just keeps the minute. We only got 11 shots up here to our 19 in the first, but... Oh, man. All right, I'm just going to have to... Slow sim third, and we'll see what happens. Anything can happen. Come on, boys. Listen to all the fans at home. Let's get something going. Come on, boys. 
Come on, boys. Eight minutes left in the third period. Tied 3-3. We could go down. And Panarin, dude. Ah, power play. Ah, Christian Erhoff with the empty netter. Oh, my God, dude. What a stupid comeback that was. Freaking John Hayden with two goals. Like, who even are you? Legit. Do, do Blackhawks fans even know you? Probably not. And then... <sighs> Panarin with two goals, and that is ridiculous. I cannot believe we actually blew that. Like, 2 nothing after the first, and then John Hayden scores back-to-back -back goals to tie the game. Then Tomas Hurdle gets another one for his second of the night. And then Panarin with 37 seconds left, and Panarin with a game winner. It's stupid. We're down 3-1 in the series, going back to Chicago now. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm not too confident about it. Uh, we're just we're going to have to simulate game number five. We're away. I don't know. Our only win has came on the road. So right now, if anything means that, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm so pissed about that loss. It's so stupid. Like, what the hell? Shit. Shit game. First period. 0-0. We are out shooting them 14 to 6. Crawford, as you would expect, still keeping them in it though. Second period, Brandon Hudden. Um I don't know why I said Brandon. I it's Ben Hudden. I'm retarded. Ben Hudden at 1720 gets the lead and so far the only goal of the game. Now, we are out shooting them 29 to 14 and uh, we are away, so this could be a very big deal, and it would be ideal to get another one, obviously, so we can have a little bit of a comfort zone, but never mind. Brad Malone, come on, come on, power play, nothing can come from it, and Marion hosts the dude. Oh my god, I'm slowing down the simulation. This game is ridiculous. How do we not have anything come from this? Please, boys, we need scoring. Why is Crawford so good? Why does he make every save in the world? I can't. This game sucks. This game sucks. We just lost in five. We won game number one, and then four straight wins from the Blackhawks. Crawford is guaranteed your first star. I, this is ridiculous, man. Ah. So, shit. It's Corey Crawford. He's not that good. He really isn't that good. Ah. And we're down 3-1 in the series in the AHL as well. Like, come on, man. So shitty. Like, no, there's nothing I can even do about it either. We'll see how we do. Ask uh, Fuck off, scouting. And this game is shit. One defenseman. One defenseman for one week. Uh, and we get eliminated in five there, too. What the shit game. Uh, this game is ridiculous. I cannot believe Crawford... Just did that to us. He's not that good of a goaltender, man. Holy frig. Shit game. I'm actually pissed. This is ridiculous. Crawford is not that good of a goaltender. And I swear to God, if they won the cup... Yeah, that's right. A good team actually won the cup. Fucking Blackhawks. Shit. Stupid game. Ridiculous. Who won the lottery? Who won the lottery? Calgary. And the Islanders. And then Edmonton. And then the Rangers. Look at that. Two New York teams in the top four. And the two Alberta teams in the top four. What a shit game. Oh, man. I am pissy about that. I, I'm i actually so... Uh, <laughs> ha. This game sucks. Uh, 
Ryan Miller. Yeah, probably the only goalie you actually recognize that retires. And then skaters, Marion Hosa. Yeah, that's right, you old man. Uh, Daniel Sedin on the Bruins. Thomas Vanek, Patrick Sharp, Derek Roy, Antoine Vermette, uh, Brad Boys, Alexander Burroughs. Uh, maybe we needed Burroughs there. He was the savior in the 2011 series against the Blackhawks. Maybe we needed Burroughs. It's a rip. Um, yeah, that's about it, I guess. <sighs> I'm not going to do the draft this episode. I will do it in the next episode. Um, sorry for the saltiness, but I am upset, and we should not have lost. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully, you all did enjoy. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a rough one, but uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace, guys.